Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to fill a mesh with curves. You can see they are winding through the volume and avoiding intersections. So as per usual, there's the hip file on my Procygen website. You can download the file here for free. And there's also a Patreon link. So if you want to support my work, there's a page for that as well. Before we start from scratch, let's just look at the setup. So we have a subdivided mesh, which is converted to a volume. We put in a bunch of points and both the volume and the points are then mutually affecting each other inside the volume. So you can see the points are painting the inside the volume. And at the same time, the points are being pushed away from dark areas of the volume. So this is how they move by themselves. And the other steps are simply trailing these points and sweeping them. So let's start in a new document with a pick head. Set it to easy and give it a bunch or at least one subdivision. We can also use the match size node to give it unit size by scaling it to fit, let's say, y to 1. So that should be in the perfect center. And next we convert it to a VDB from polygons and set the voxel size to 0.02. We can even give it 0.01 to make it a bit more precise. The reason we are using a VDB surface is so we can reshape it. We are going to offset it by 0.1 in world units, so it's a bit thicker, or maybe let's leave it to 0.05, so the curves have enough space also in the thinner parts of the mesh. Before we create a solver, we are going to merge the volume with a bunch of points. I will get them from a platonic solid, but you could start however you like. And I'm going to use an icosahedron to a rather small radius and remove the primitives using the add node set to delete geometry, but keep the points. Let's make merge both so they should be combined. Just make sure the volume comes first. Now let's set up the solver and inside the solver we are going to make some room for a volume wrangle which is there to paint the volume. And what I think we did not do is before we start we need to convert the volume to a fog. So there's VDB convert for that. Usually this is being used to create polygons again, but we want a, another VDB class. So convert SDF to fog. And while we're here, we should also rename the VDB to D. So D is the name I'm going to use and inside the volume wrangle, we are just multiplying f at d, for example, by 0.2, so you see it gets darker, or we multiply it by 2, so you see it gets brighter. And this is exactly how we are going to paint into our voxel field. So first of all, I would like to know the closest point for each voxel. So let's say we are here, this is the voxel, this would catch this point, and we want to find out the distance and then create a mask based on that distance. So int pt would be assigned to the near point function on the same geometry stream based on our current voxel's position. Then we want to know the position of the point using the point function on the same geometry stream we want to get the position and feed in the point number, pt. And then 
we calculate the distance between the position of the point and the voxel position. Now we don't want to map the distance directly but rather create a mask using the smooth function. So from being really close to the point to let's say 20 or 0.2 uh, we would create a mask like so. Now what we should get if you put in the multiplication uh, mask you should see some dark shades around each point. You can now make the mask a bit smaller but that would be the first thing we need. To make all this a bit smoother there's a smooth SDF function or sm rather smooth VDB smooth. I give it one iteration and a radius of world space units 0.05. Next, we create an attribute wrangle that is running over points and assign it the second input we will assign to the volume. And what we want to do is we want to add to the point position a gradient that is normalized multiplied by a step of 0.03 and the gradient of the volume is basically the direction from dark to bright. So let's use the volume gradient function to get that on the second input this time because we want the blurred version. It's still called D and we want to know this on the current points position. So normalize gradient and now when we use U to leave the solver and hit play, we should see these points are moving and painting the volume. At the same time, the volume is also being moved because we didn't exclude it yet. So let's set the group to points, exclamation marks, zero, and call the wrangle move points. So let's get out, jump back and hit play and you should see these points are now fastly um, erasing the volume. At the same time, I um, either wish the entire geometry was a bit bigger so we could set the target size to two by two by two, jump back and then you see we're still painting here takes a bit longer because the resolution is still very high so we would accommodate for that and make this maybe the voxel size to 0 0.02 or 0 0.04 something like that. All right next we want to blast the volume so you would delete the first point and use the trail node to basically draw trails behind the, each point. I want to do this for the entire length of my animation, which I can set to 1200, and you see this would be updated here, and the cache size should also be frame end. And we would like to get polygons without closed rows, so that would be our curves. The next step would be to make sure that the curves look the way we want them to. So you can redefine the smoothing. You could change the radius so this wouldn't be set in stone. Just play with that and also consider changing the width of each step. Let's see how the blurring changes the, the look. So what we could do here is just uh, blur it more and maybe even change the radius. All right, back to the trail node. This would be the curves I'm choosing for now. I still have a bit of jittering going on there. 
So maybe it's even a good idea to make the voxels a bit rougher. And let's hope that the volume gradient is, yeah, that looks a bit smoother, I think. All right, now that the volume is filled, we can do some cosmetics like uh, resample it and set it to subdivision, increasing the resolution a bit to 0.02. You could also use the smooth node on the curves before you resample. And then the last step would be sweeping it. I use a round tube, scale it downwards a bit. That would be the basic effect. If you want a, a touch of color, we could also maybe make a spherical gradient, a color shift from the center. So I call it U and it's based on the length of the position vector. Let's call this color um, depth. And then I would use a color node, which is taking in this attribute and turning it into a color ramp. So let's use U and instead of float U, rewrite F at U. So we can now just make some gradient like this, or maybe you find something more exciting like this. All right, thank you for watching and keep playing with all the parameters to optimize the result as I do here. Thank you for watching.